Anyway, today the goal is actually um the goal is actually to do a Yunli's companion quest. I think I've wrote that in the title even insane. So we are gonna jump into it, I think. I've been wanting to do it and I just haven't. So let's teleport to the Chanchalofu. Let's see, there it is. Swords to plowshares. Is glorious as a sticker though? True. Do I leave the cat cam? I mean, Lily is very cute right now. I, I might leave the cat cam. All right, let's see. Ever since Bart started learning soul play from Changchi and Lily, her voice has been absent in the express. I wonder how well she's progressing. Where has she been these days? Have you seen Mart 7? She didn't turn up for practice. Uh, I love like her bio is just like woo fight question <laughs> mark Who's Mart 7? Um I plan to go look for her. I'll just plan to look for her. Frankly, I haven't seen her around either. Oh. Hmm. If I can't find Mart 7, then I can only seek out her legal garden, which is you. Um I'm not her legal guardian. There's no use talking to her guardians. If the kid won't perform, seeking the ground ups or out won't do anything either. Besides, when has Marts ever listened to me? Indeed, Grandpa would usually throw out all the complainers. Ugh, I was ordered to instruct her in the ways of the sword. She can skip this class, but I can't skip my duty. We need to talk about your child's behavior, kitty. How about this? You come find me at Orum Alley. I'll wait for you. <laughs> I guess Mart 7 is officially my child. Which, considering the amount of porn I've seen of Stell and March together, is uh, a bit boring. Ah, oh, Lily, she's falling asleep. Look at this little kitty pie. She's so cute, dude. Alright, anyway. Uh, let's go! Let us -a go! Sword to plowshare. Let's follow it. Let's go to Orm Alley first and foremost. Alright. Uh, where is she? There she is. Yelly! So cute! No coffee today. Oh, good night, fam! Hey, girl! Hi, dear! You came to play with me? <laughs> A great hero like you, finding time to play with me can't be easy. Uh, let's catch up another time, yeah. My voice is dead, by the way, so I'm probably just gonna speak, like, blah, 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 blah. It's tired, tired kitty voice. Oh, there you are. I was looking around before you got here. I can't do high pitch. How do you look everywhere, but March 7, you have to be found. Uh, you need to keep looking for March 7th. No, let's just assume she successfully skipped class. Actually, she's been quite diligent in her swordplay practice and hasn't taken many breaks lately. I think she deserves a day off. Source to plowshares, one white mana, exile target creature, owner of the creatures gain life for the amount of toughness, good old card. Damn. Nerd. Nerd alert. I haven't played Magic the Gathering forever. Actually, I actually played it for a while when it came out on the uh, Magic MTG Arena. That was fun. And before that, man, I used to play when I was in middle school. Besides, I used to skip classes even more than her back when I was still learning. If I was in the mood, I could train for three days straight, but I wasn't in the mood. None of my students could find me. Didn't like it on PC? I liked it because it was free. So I can understand where she's coming from. Hey, congrats, Kate. I, I still have to try and make a break. I've seen some of the customization options that's possible for the game, and it's crazy. <laughs> you can fully customize the ass, and if you move the slider, it looks like the ass is just... The ass cheeks are literally clapping. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so funny. Um... Uh... Like she learned it from her master. Don't make excuses for her. Since you're here, let me treat you some tasty food. I'm more interested in you today. Um, you're too young for me, girl. Let me be clear, I'm not learning swordplay from you. 
the bat is my only love in life. <gasps> Interested in what? Let's walk and talk. Okay. You're running. Maybe Chat told me that's tasty food in our melee. Let's go there. Eat the meal? Eat the meal? little baby. Cute. A table for two, please. Alright, come on in. What would you like? Well, we'll have one of everything on the menu. The entire menu? Hmm? Do you think it will be enough? I don't have much money on me right now. She's probably won't be able to finish it all. Don't worry, there are two of us. Uh, Yuli looks at you confidently. Oh god, she's gotta eat everything, isn't she? Petit is fighting and trying to catch her tail. It's a, no way, she's actually trying to catch her feet. What is she doing? <laughs> well, then I'll start making a few dishes. And if you need more, just let me know. Thank you. Are you sure we don't need to look for March? Do you usually eat a lot? Mm, yeah, <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, not too much, actually. Grandpa said to never be stingy when it comes to making friends. So, how big is your appetite? I don't eat much. Ah! When I eat, I eat a lot. But I don't eat often, that's the thing. Then eat to your heart's content. Are you sure we don't need to look for March? No, I thought about it. She deserves a day off. Okay. Did you say you were interested in me? Well, to be more precise, I'm interested in your sword. Yanjing mentioned you before. He said that you're not to be underestimated and that your weapon has a unique shape. So I've always been curious about your sword. How the weight is distributed, what material it's made of, whether it contains any special engineer, and what kind of sword techniques you use. Uh, it's not a sword, it's a baseball bat. Seriously, a bat? Are you disappointed? Just the opposite. This is fascinating. You place your beloved batch, you must just compare your parents second only to the likes of Mark 7, that Hank, Welt, Ipico, and Pom Pom before you in this case. Insane. I read fast because sometimes the text just goes away super- Oh! Look at- Lily is so cute right now. She's watching the screen. She's adorable. So it really is a baseball bat. Grandpa said that the sword doesn't have to be constrained by its shape, so in a sense your bat is a sword too. He also said that the weapon mimics its mastery. So your bat actually reflects your habits and natures, you know? My bat doesn't go... dumpster diving. Let me guess. You're someone who doesn't follow the rules, enjoy improvising and handle yourself well against top foes, am I right? I always follow the rules. Uh, I've been sick to film with me. Amazing, right? And I bet you always say something like... Something silly like, rules are made to be broken. I don't. I've come across so many sword wielders who acted all righteous and moral, but were very just liars. The sword always told the truth, though. They told me that their wielders were just a bunch of frauds who relied on their divine weapons for everything. I've hunted down hundreds of swords like this so far, and every single one of them has been melted down. Damn. Wait, you take people's sword by force and melt them down? Yes, but only for those who cross the line. Melting their sword is my way of protecting the weapon. But just looking at the sword is not enough. Grandpa always says words and expression can be deceiving. But in the fight to the death, a sword's movement never lie. The one in just around the corner, you'll be participating, right? That's Ling Sha, right? Q is on the hunt again? I don't know. But Lily is certainly confused. Miss Lonely. Yinli, for a talented sword master like you, the warden still prefer the opportunity to show off your skill and make a name for yourself. Oh no, it's not. It's Shi Shi Kui. For people like Kiss, who have already made significant contribution to the Zhang Show, they maybe don't need to prove themselves on the warden stage. It's Lily's time to shine on the chair. She kind of looks like a raccoon, doesn't she? Lily. Really? Look at her little raccoon face. She kind of looks like a raccoon. <laughs> She's so cute. Ah! Oh. It has been a while, Kitty. And you are? Uh, this is Madame Yukong's secretary. 
Thank you for your introduction, Kitty. I'm Xie Shui, and I work at the Palace of Astrum as the secretary for the Hellmaster. I apologize for interrupting your conversation. I happen to hear you discussing the war dance, and since Kitty is an old acquaintance, I thought I would come and say hello. Are you hosting any guests, Xie Shui? Ah, uh, yes, with the wardens approaching, many guests from afar are pouring in. Mr. Pavel here is one of them. He's from the distant planet Kalevala. Mr. Pavel's planet recently joined the Pan Cosmic Trade System. He brought his delegation here this time, not only for business, but also to return something that belongs to the Shanjo. Hmm. Hey, Tanya, happy Thursday. Mishikui, the word gift is perhaps more fitting than return. But it did once belong to the Chancho, we faced many tribulations to be able to deliver it here. So it should be considered a gift. I apologize for my poor choice of words. Mr. Pavo's delegation brought a legendary Chancho sword that had been lost for centuries. Joel Huayan plans to personally thank them at the Palace of Astrum and present a sword as a prize to the champion of the war dance. Mr. Pavo and I were actually on our way there. Hmm. Since you two were talking so enthusiastically about the wardens, maybe you'd be interested in joining us at the Palace of Astrum. Let's talk to Pavo. What's up, dude? You do mean Tuesday, right? Hey, if something, someone tells me Thursday, I answer Thursday. First of all, I don't want to break their immersion of whatever world they live in and uh, secondly i don't know what day it is nice to meet you both the journey to the jungle Luofu wasn't an easy one but the scenery here is worth it it's completely different from my homeland once the formalities of the palace of astrum are finished i find a quiet spot on the street and plant a seedling and then my mission will be complete this soul of yours will finally be returned to its rightful owners i couldn't be happier uh, let's talk about Kalevala. Oh, you're interested in my home planet. It's great. Your Excellency is welcome to visit us at any time. Even though the trade route just opened, uh, it still might take around 200 system hours to get there from Pure Point. But the planet is really great. Sure, it's a bit cold and the food is a bit repetitive and our houses aren't as fancy as those on Pure Point. But that doesn't matter. There's covered massive supernium deposits and we're on the path to prosperity. Kuru kuru, kuru kuru. What about the sword? You mean the Mieka Kivesa? It's an incredible sword. That weapon helped the legendary heroes of my homeland slay demon and is highly revered. It also has the power to choose monarch. All the ancient kings of Kalevala received a sign from the sword showing they were worthy to rule the land. According to tradition, each monarch would plunge a sword into a stone and only a hero organized by the sword could pull it out and ascend to the throne next. Is it some sort of biometric technology? Well, those are just legends from the past. No one, t those are just legends from the past. No one today has witnessed it firsthand. Why don't you keep the sword for yourselves? Well, times have changed, and now that we have a council in place, the idea of a sword crowning a king has become a joke. Besides, it wasn't the native of Kalevala who last pulled out the sword and recognized its connection to the Chancho ship. It was a visitor from afar. Ah. While the sword holds great historical significance for Kalevala, it doesn't truly belong to our world. Insane, okay. But the old timers on council had a heated debate about whether to return the sword. They eventually and unanimously agreed to let the Mieka Kivesa return to where it truly belongs. That's the best possible outcome. Uh, I'm going to be test its return to. Wonderful, Subarashi! It's an honor to have so many people witness this towards homecoming. Okay, good talk. Hi, Yunli! Let's head to the Palace of Astrum together, Kitty. Uh, I'd love to take a look at the sword too. I know, right? Thanks to more servants keeping class, we get to join in on the fun. Grandpa always asked me to go look at swords with him. He doesn't say anything about this one. It's really weird. Now that we're invited, let's go and check it out, Kitty. Okay. Let's go to the Palace of Astrum. Yeah. Yeah, let me teleport here. Can you... Hello? Oh, it's because it's inside this place. Never mind. We'll teleport there then. 
I'm sorry, brain is so foggy right now. Hi Drake, what's up? There you are! Come on, let's go to the ceremony together! Let's go! Argent is here! Oh, so he's the one that pulled the sword! I guess! Or maybe he's just... He likes beauty, so he wants to see the sword. Please allow me to offer a sincere compliment, my fair lady. Your beauty is as pure as a snow white iris. Well, if it isn't my dear friend, glad to meet you again. Who is this weirdo? Uh, I, I mean, who is this knight? I am Argenti, a member of the Knights of Beauty. I was invited as part of the Kalevala delegation to escort the legendary Miega Kivesa back to the Chancho. <laughs> May I have the honor of knowing your name? My name is Only. What a beautiful name! I wonder if you have ever heard the holy name of the pure influence goddess Idrilla. Oh, you're here, Yodli. They expect you to be so well informed. Well, now that you're here, don't forget your manners. Manners, manners. Come on, you won't find another granddaughter as polite and well behaved as me. You just called him a weirdo to his face. Well, just remember, this is a very serious ceremony. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Mr. Pavo. Now, let the sword gifting ceremony begin. Before the ceremony officially commences, I want to express my gratitude to the Knight Argenti. Thank you for enlightening us about the sword's origin and for escorting it here safely so that we may complete this ceremony. On behalf of the Kalevalan delegation, I, Pavo Kalastadja, am here to return the legendary Mika Kvesa to the Shonju Alliance, its rightful homeland. I find it so funny that Argenti it just shows up everywhere and just... The guy is just known everywhere. Like, he's the three times champion on Pinacone's, like, uh, fucking uh, reality TV show of, like, uh... Who's the biggest superstar of the year? Like, she's fucking everywhere! I'm truly grateful for Kalevala's noble act of returning the sword and for the Knight of Beauty's chivalry. Now, as we gather here on the Chantra Luofu, I officially welcome the sword back to its homeland. It's like, Mieka Kivesa. It's a fitting name for a sword with such a legendary past. I still remember the name engraved on the sword that they would forge. Guyun. It was forged by Huang Wang, a craftsman from the Xuming's Flame Wheel Forge. Hmm. Okay. Wait, Huang Wang? Although its blade is worn and cracked, its essence remained as resilient as the Gentle Cloud Knights. All it needs is some repairs and polishing by the skilled craftsmen of the Asin Commission to regain its former glory. Wang, I assume it might be from the same family as uh, Hua Yan. I feel like it's probably his son or Inli's father. I remember, didn't she say that she hated her father because he made a bunch of cursed sword that he wanted, she wanted to find him on? I've decided to address this story Goyun, to the Luofu Artisanship Commission for Restoration. Furthermore, it will serve as a prize for the champion of the Luofu War Dance. This sword will be wielded against a Bavidation to protect our homeland and live up to the mission of the Kalevalan delegation that returned it from so far away. Oh! Thank you, General! It is an honor for Kalevala. Now, esteemed guests, the knight and delegation members, please say to the official commission where... No! This sword is forged by Huang Wan! Hey, Hakumashiro, what's up? Yundi. These esteemed guests have brought back your father's last work. Where are your manners? I didn't realize the sword was actually forged by your father. Uh, returning it to its rightful owner is... 
Grandpa, give me that cursed sword right now. I'll melt away the ruins of that man's curse once and for all. Maybe I shouldn't react. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I don't think I should. Like, I don't know the history. Don't be rude, you and Lee. Apologize to our esteemed guests from afar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making a scene, but I have to melt down this cursed sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Unli, please go for now. Aw, oh, poor little girl. So is only also is only also a uh, long lived species? I mean everybody lives for a long time. The Shanjo. But uh yeah. This is exactly why I didn't want Unli to know about this. I didn't want to create trouble, but trouble found its way here anyway. Perhaps it really is divine intervention. Okay. Katie, could you please keep an eye on Yunli for me? Uh... Sure. That is a tall order, but I'm counting on you. You're way taller than me, so it makes sense. I apologize for the unfortunate interruption. Let's just move on with the ceremony. Let's go! Unless I'm mistaken, you only should be around here somewhere. Hmm. Oh, there she is. Having a conversation with the potter plant. What is she? Argenti? Is she crying? Stop watching me and say something. Poor thing, are you crying? If you want, I can make you cry too. Did Grandpa send you to look for me? I bet he did. Oh. Oh, so now you're a mind reader. Just so you know, I'm here just waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that sword. And once I have it, I'll melt it down before anyone can react. Don't even think about stopping me. No one can stop me. Uh, no one can help you if you don't explain what's going on. Grandpa sent you here. Surely he doesn't want you to help me. Have you ever heard of cursed swords? The sword is one. Uh, so it's a sword that's been cursed? I guess the way it means literally. A cursed sword lets anyone, even a complete novice, will it with insane skill. Just by holding the hilt, even the weakest rookie can bench you with incredible speed and strength. So, where can I buy one? Damn. With something like that, Marcel could graduate in just one day. I'm not joking around, and I'm not making up some crazy story. While a cursed sword grants instant abilities to its wielder, it comes at a cost. It's like continuously adding fuel to a forge. With each swing, the sword drains the wielder's blood and essence, day by day. The fuel will burn out, leaving nothing but an empty husk. Damn, that's, that's not good. Soon enough, you will no longer be a person wielding a sword, but a mindless killing machine consumed by bloodlust and murderous thoughts. So it's like being possessed by a Heliobus. Oh, so you found out with the Elobi. A Heliobi. That makes it much easier to explain. There was a lunatic swordsmith who infused metal blades with the Elobi, and he was obsessed with turning weapons into living things. And this is how curse swords were made. Uh, so your father sealed the Heliobus inside the sword. I know I shouldn't have caused the scene at the sword gifting ceremony, but I've thought this through. If I don't make a fuss now, the cursor will cause a whole lot more trouble. It's better if it's me causing the trouble. By the way, aren't they supposed to be taking the sword to the Art Engine Commission for repairs? Why haven't they come out yet? Any ideas? Uh, maybe there are other ways out to the Palace of Astrum. Looks like they're not going to show up here. I'll just head straight to Art Engine Commission ship. I don't know why I keep mixing this world. The Art Ship Commission. It doesn't matter why Grandpa chose that sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's uh, hands. I'll track down every single sword he forged and melt them down one after another. Just like I've been doing all these years. I have to go now, Kitty. Okay. 
Is she planning to sneak into the Artisanship Commission and steal that sword? Probably. Maybe I should keep an eye on her. Petite, don't walk on the table, I swear to No, petite! Petite! Petite, petite, oh my god. Fine, come here. I'm being attacked by a cat, I'm sorry. Okay, we're good. The attention commission is so big, where could she be? Hmm. Let's go talk to this nerd. There's a while ago, a girl came up to me all fierce in the mending direction. She says she's a member of the Shinji Commission, do you know her? No idea who she is. If she really works here, how could she not know her way around? Was she carrying a massive sword? She wasn't big at all, but that weapon of hers was pretty intimidating. She was in a hurry, heading straight for the Autism Chief Commission, and I didn't want to ask too many questions. She says I think I'm a member of the Autism Chief Commission, but you keep your precious stuff. I got scared and pointed toward Master Gongshu's warehouse where he stores his aromaton. Wait, what do you give her direction? But she's planning to steal something, uwu. Let's cut to the chance, where did she go? Well, like I said, she was heading straight for the warehouse, where all the valuable aromatons are. That place is filled with Master Gongshu's precious aromaton. They'll give her a hard time. Alright, let's go help. Can I not use this? For some reason, it doesn't work today. What the hell? It's supposed to work. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, fine. I mean, maybe I can just teleport across. Yep, let's go. Problem fixed. Just can't be arsed. Hello! Yanni! Oh, she's doing fine. What are you doing here? Look, if I get into trouble, it's my problem. I don't want to drag you into it. Uh, is this really the time to talk about that? Fine, let's match these metal cans first, then we can talk. Oh, let's go! Mmm. あり、あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あり、あり。あ
Let me clear though. I'm still pretty riled up. This this is just a temporary break. I already told you about Guyan, the sword that was turned during the ceremony. It's a cursed sword with a hell rupees inside, and Wang Wan, the sword who forget forged is my father. I rarely mention his name to anyone than a grandpa. Maybe, like you said, I've been avoiding having to talk about him. As long as my mission to hunt down Curse Sword continues, it's impossible to avoid the topic forever. For some reason, I feel like I can open up to you. Honestly, I don't remember much about him. All I know is that the Flame Wheel Forge is to be a bustling place with people from all over coming to get one of his sword. They called him the greatest master craftsman since Yenshin. Yenshin. I didn't catch all the detail, but I do remember seeing Forge's amazing sword while the visitors watched with smiles on their faces. I used to believe that craftsmen brought happiness to others. The swords crafted by the Flame Wheel Forge are famed across the stars. They possess exceptional sharpness and invincibility. With these legendary weapons, even ordinary people can become skilled warriors capable of overcoming the most formidable opponents. She's so adorable, dude. She's so cute. I love her. But then he became obsessed with becoming a famed swordsmith and started crossing all sorts of lines. He forged Scar's sword that should never exist, and all the people who desired to switch the sword started flooding into the palace. Whoever, just like Rampa said, those who excel with the sword will eventually suffer by it. The palace was overrun with visitors from afar. Some left empty handed, others got sword that didn't fulfill their desires. And some even resorted to stealing. In the midst of all the chaos my father created, he ended up being stabbed by one of the swords he forged. Damn. It was so sudden and unexpected. Everything went silent for a moment. All I could hear was the sound of bone breaking and blood pouring out. I was frozen in place and able to move. It was only when my mother pushed me away from the deadly swing of the cursed sword that I managed to escape. I don't remember much after that, except for the pounding of my heart and the sound of my own gas for breath. I could hear the smiths in the flame wheel forge shouting, run away on me, and the screams of agony. That does not sound great. My tears wouldn't stop and I couldn't see anything. I kept gasping for air until I collapsed in the pool of blood. If Jill Hua Yan hadn't arrived in time, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. After that, John Huayan took me in and treated me like his own granddaughter. To me, he's a hundred times better than my sinful father. He taught me forging and swordsmanship. Hmm, so they're not actually related by blood. Not at all. Huang Guang paid for his sins, but his trouble legacy must not go unchecked. According to the records, he forged a total of 1,382 Halibus cursed swords, and 182 of them had unique designs. When I joined the Flame Wheel Forge for training, I made a vow to hunt down all those cursed swords. So far, I found 312 of them, and Guyan will be my 313th. Damn! Take care, Kate! See you later! Like all the other cursed swords that separated from the Helibus, they now melted down and make it part of the Blade of Forge remnants. I said my piece now. Even though it will be tough for Grandpa, I still have to melt down the sword. I think you should talk to General Huayan about it. So, you're saying even though Grandpa knew it was a cursed sword, he still chose it to be a prize because he thought it wouldn't cause any trouble? No, no matter how I think about it, something is definitely off. Grandpa didn't tell me anything about the ceremony. He must be hiding something. Besides, after our argument today, you want me to go back and talk to him now? No way, at least not today. Maybe tomorrow. So I'm half to talking to you, I feel like I've called off a bit. Well, I'll have another nice conversation with Grandpa tomorrow. And I won't take any action against Guyan until he gives me his reasons. Don't forget to apologize to General Huayan. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that in a public space. Play, sorry. Anyway, thank you, Kitty. We'll catch up tomorrow. She's great. I like her. I should go back to the Palace of Astrum and tell General Huayan what happened at the Artisan Commission ship. Artisan ship commission! I keep making this mistake! It's killing me! Alright, we can teleport here. The helipato!
Hello. My granddaughter didn't cause any trouble, did she, Kitty? She's fine. Explain the only situation to Huayan. Uh, and Huayan's nervous expression is easily told. Sorry for all this trouble. You only told you quite a bit. Now it's time for this old man to tell my side of the story. Wang Wan was my beloved disciple. Her rare genius lost in the flame wheel fort since Yangjing. However, talent can sometimes be a curse. He had an unusual fervor for forging, and he dreamed of forging a sword with self-awareness and surpassed that of humans. He believed it would make warriors invincible without any training. According to him, while weapons of mass destruction like zooming flames and alchemical arrows can destroy many enemies, true victory is like with soldiers who fearlessly fight, ready to lay their lives on the line. Usually, Shancho swordsmiths infuse a basic level of awareness into their swords to make them easier to wield. But even then, the soldiers need to experience countless battle to overcome fear and sharpen their instincts, so... Uh, he thought of using helibitopes or emotions. By infusing Halobi into swords, he managed to forge weapons that could grant their wielders strength and valor, and even make decisions for them. However, weapons are different from regular tools. They are meant to kill, plain and simple. At the countless battle, all the anger, fear, and bloodlust are soaked up by the Halobi within the sword. The soldier wielding them not only gains strength, but they also become consumed by the malice, turning to puppet possessed by the sword. No matter how noble Huang Wang's intentions were, those weapons soaked in blood turn his cursed sword eventually. Later, out of worlders got wind of what he was doing and encouraged him to keep forging cursed sword. They came up with all sorts of reason, from taking back their kingdom to slaying demons. I know what happened next. That massacre took her parents' lives, and the lives of many craftsmen in the Flame Wheel Forge. Yudi managed to survive, but she couldn't escape the horrors of that day. Um. But that's not really contain a helibus. Guyan is indeed one of the cursed sword forged by Huang Wang. Very few swordsmiths could use helibai as forging material, and Huang Wang was one of them. His attempt came at a terrible cost. That's why you didn't want her to see the sword. Yes, I don't want her to spend her whole life trapped under her father's shadow. She doesn't deserve to carry the weight of his mistakes. Hmm. Despite her vow to hunt down and wipe out all cursed swords, fulfilling that vow requires immense effort. Traversing the starry seas in search of the sword is like finding a needle in a haystack. And to reclaim the sword, she has to jewel the bloodthirsty wilders, teetering on the edge of life and death. She has taken back over 300 cursed swords and has suffered the same number of fatal wounds. I took her in to give her a chance at a normal childhood, not to send her on a sword hunting journey. Even if she manages to melt down all the cursed swords one day, what will she do with her life after? Hmm. He only plans to talk to you tomorrow. I thought this sword could be an opportunity. I wanted to tell her that her father was the all evil, that even the man she resents so much managed to forge a true sword of heroes. I also wanted to find a chance to tell her about the history and the origin of this sword, but not during the ceremony, as you saw. It wasn't a good time. Doing your story took about two weeks to do, that's a long time. I've instructed the Artisanship Commission to keep the sword safe in the arsenal. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask the people involved. It took you about two days? I, I just didn't start it because I was busy. I play so many games that, like, I just don't have time. So today I put time aside to do it. Must I go and choose? There's something I want to talk with you about. General Haiyan gave the lure for so called Guyun. Don't you worry, General Huayan has already conferred his instructions. Right, I heard from my apprentices that a young lady was sold barge into the Artisanship Commission. That's General Huayan's granddaughter, right? Is she here to chat or kidnap me? Uh, she already promised me that she wouldn't take Guyan until we've confirmed the situation. What? She's coming to steal the sword. My nurse can take much more of this. Is that your cat? It's one of them, yeah. It's Lily. The Knight of Beauty just scored the sword to the Artisanship Commission. It's currently in the armory without a chance for compromise or mishaps. You just relax. One of time I want to hear the girl tell me why she tried to steal the blade. That's cute. Yeah, she's adorable. Her name is Lily and she's the best. Hmm, look at her. Sonotokyo, Matsushka, Nai. Oh, my son, 
長い間あの子の面倒を見て疲れただろう。Who's a good cat? You are. Yes, you are. I love it. Like as soon as I put my hand on her head, she just like woke up. Since my granddaughter's mentioned talking to me tomorrow, I'll be waiting for her. By the way, you watch over her for quite some time. You must be exhausted, aren't you? A pretty lady like her never gets tiring. <laughs> I'll be counting on you again. Time to go back in front of class, keep in March 7. Indeed. Alright, let's go. Sipping, melting, gossiping, time sleeps away, notice the next day arrive. Hell yeah. A new message. Are you able to cooperate with us for a bit? C care to come by the Arsenium Commission? Something happens to the sword? Whoa, I didn't even say anything. How'd you know? That's quiet. The Arsenium Commission said they received the sword yesterday from General Huayan. Today, when we checked in, the sword had vanished. Anyway, the Realm Keeping Commission is officially conducting an investigation and is interrogating relevant individuals. I told them to be careful. I even told Mr. Gongshu yesterday to keep careful watch on the sword. Does he know about the current situation? Yeah, he reported this case. Anyway, anyone who attended yesterday's ceremony and lack a clear alibi will be considered a suspect. The craftsman also mentioned a young girl who broke into the Artisanship Commission with a sword in hand. She bears the bulk of the suspicion. Alright, enough chatter. I'll see you at the Artisanship Commission. Okay. A bit hungry. Yes. Alright, everyone is here. It's time for questioning. Yudli, I'm sure you understand why the official called you here, right? Yeah, but I didn't steal the sword. I can vouch for her. She promised she wouldn't steal the sword. Unfortunately, official Dahao didn't hear Yunli's promise. If you don't recover the sword, you will be breaking your promise to the Luofu and betraying the delegation. We're counting on you to find the truth, official Dahao. It's my duty to thoroughly investigate the case. Even though Yunli is firm in her words, we can't just rely on her testimony. After everything, the sword still got stolen. They should have given it to me from the beginning. I just keep quiet. In this case of Guyun's theft, everyone involved seems suspicious to some extent, but Miss Yunli is the main suspect. First, during the sword gifting ceremony, Yunli openly expressed her intention to steal the sword. She even mentioned it multiple times after the ceremony, she broke into the Artisanship Commission and destroyed all matons in an attempt to get the sword. Am I right? That's true. The Realm Keeping Commission inspects the, the arsenal where Guyun was stored, and there was no sign of forced entry through the doors or window. The only possible entrance or exit was a small window gap, just a few inches wide. Ah, it's like a locked room murder mystery. It's just a theft. The box contained Guyans were open, and the sword went missing. But none of the other swords in the room were touched, which means... Um... The suspect knew about the box and the sword. Well, I do know about the box and the cursed sword. Exactly. The suspect had a clear motive and took only Guyan. So beside the ceremony participants, only the delegation members had access to the sword. Could it be that someone from the delegation stole the sword? Mm, in that case, why would they return to Tushanju in the first place? Uh, not that everyone in the delegation has the same agenda. That makes sense. The delegation led by the Knight of Beauty delivered the sword to the Artisanship Commission. The craftsman who received it testified that it didn't take anything from the Arsenal. Could be that stole the sword? Oh, Genti. Oh, the Knight of Beauty. He was with the delegation when they handed over the sword to the Artisanship Commission. You might not know, but he's the one who recognized the sword's origin on Kalevala and escorted it back to the Jandro. In other words, he's the one who made it possible for the sword to come home. So he wouldn't have gone through all the trouble to bring it to the Luofu if he wanted to keep the sword for himself, right? Could be that craftsman stole the sword? As the Gong Shu checked the work records, and I questioned all the craftsmen and apprentices who were at the shift all the time. I didn't find any suspicious individual. Okay. Could it be that I stole the sword? So, did you steal it? No, I didn't. And stop joking around! <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can prove that Kitty came to me after leaving the Oxygen Commission, so he 
She! She! Couldn't have stolen the sword. To put it simply, not everyone who seen the sword has been to the Artisanship Commission. And not everyone who might want a sword has seen it. So the only remaining suspect is Miss Yunli. Fair enough. So... I didn't steal the sword. Well, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains however improbable must be the truth. Oh my god, we have... We have... A Sherlock Holmes with us. He said the thing. Um, this isn't the only remaining possibility. If you want to prove me wrong, Kitty, you'd better come up with some solid evidence. Let me gather my thoughts. I need to help Yenli clear her name. True. Let's do that. Do we miss any clues? Um. Alright, let's talk to the witnesses. Hey, dude. You only said she didn't steal the sword, and I'm willing to believe her. Okay, makes sense. But I know well that Yunli can be impulsive, so if she did steal the sword on a whim, I won't show her any favor. You were with Yunli yesterday, Kitty, so you have the best chance to prove her innocence. Is there anything you need to ask me? Uh, did she come to you afterwards? No, she was still mad at me, so she didn't come by. If she had come with you, she wouldn't be a suspect right now. Hmm. How was the sword delivered? After the ceremony, Argenti carried the sword case, and together with the delegation, they were escorted by the Cloud Knights to the Artisanship Commission. The artisan there confirmed the sword was safely stored. Okay, that's all. I'm counting on you then, okay? We have his testimony. Let's check the case. The container you used to steal uh, Guyun is indeed a sight to behold. Its beauty is radiant. Perhaps it was this very beauty that has drawn unwanted attention. Regardless as one of the few pieces of physical evidence left at the scene, it just might hold traces of the thief. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, let's check the exterior first. The soul case, masterfully adorned with metal wire inlays, traces the pattern of lotus flowers. Certainly proclaim its origin from the illustrious Chandra Zhuming. Hmm. Uh, very, very well. Uh, very cool. Hey, Fluffy Tail! Uh, let's check the lock. The lock mechanism nestled within the case remains intact, bearing no mark of external force or tempering. So the thief took the sword from the case without picking the lock. Open the sword case. You notice a few smears of red along the bottom of the sword case's interior. It's hard to ignore, as if a deliberate declaration of existence to those who are viewing the sword case. Extract the red coloring from the interior of the sword case. A few petals teetering on the brink of withering. More precisely, a single rose petal. Why is this flower petal inside the case? You close the sword case and put it back. That's very sus. Mm hmm Maybe no. Maybe, maybe he's being framed. Who knows? Thank you for the hydrate. Uh, I received your message yesterday and went to the arsenal to check on it. But when I went back this morning, all that was left was the case. I don't know anything else, so asking more questions would help, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, but it's also very obvious. So, unless he wanted people to know that he stole it, it could be someone that's just trying to frame him. I don't think it's clear-cut yet. However, as a matter of artisan the Artisanship Commission, I've got to clarify something. Even though the sword was stolen, uh, the commission is still highly secure. Okay. Wait, no, I just remembered. My priest's tones were smashed. Womp womp. Okay... My part of you, don't spoil me. I'm gonna kill you. I don't want to make things difficult for official Dahao. Let's do this his way and prove my innocence. If I can find a curse sword, I can prove my innocence right away. Uh, that would make it look like you did steal it. There's something else bothering me. Why would the thief take the sword but leave the case behind? Did they mail down the sword like I wanted to? Um... Maybe the case was too much trouble? Yeah, maybe. But if the case was too much trouble, it wouldn't be the cons con too conspicuous to carry around a sword like that in plain sight.
Hmm. Who could have thought that the Miyaka Kivesa would be stolen? That the prime suspects is Joel Huayan's granddaughter. The guys, we've accomplished our mission, and now it's a Chancho's problem. By the way, why did that girl call it a cursed sword? It's quite upsetting. Um, the sword can take over the wielder's mind. That's enough, young lady. Let me get something straight. On Kalevala, this sword has always been highly revered. The first master of the Mieka Kivesa slew countless demons and then passed it down to a line of wise monarchs. The monarchs would heed the guidance of the hero spirit within the sword and gain insight into defeating the enemies. That's a common element in myth and legends. Of course, it could just be a myth. After all, no one has actually heard the sword speak. The point is that the Mieka Kivesa did help the ancestors of Kalevala build a strong foundation. It's definitely not a cursed sword. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure, sure. Okay. If I didn't close, Kitty, feel free to tell everyone. I'm 100% sure you didn't steal the sword. Thank you, Kitty, but I'm not sure if I can convince Mr. Daho. 100% sure? Fine, let me go through my reasoning again. You can't pretty take anything things off. Throughout the entire incident, uh, there was only one suspect who broke into the Arsenal Commission, and that was Miss Yunli. Your statement is quite accurate, Argenti. The Turkish members and even me were all at the Arsenal Commission at some point. True, but they all left after delivering the sword, and the craftsmen overseeing the handover confirmed that they couldn't have left with the sword. We looked into it as well. Before Guyin was handed over, the side queen at the entrance of the Assistantship Commission captured Kid leaving, but there is no record of Miss Yunli leaving. Why would I dare leave through the main entrance after smashing the automatons? Throughout the entire Okay. What evidence do I have again? He only checked after I reminded me. I think it's Master Gongshu. Like, maybe you opened the case to make sure the sword was safe. That's why the lock is intact, because he had access to the key. And then he got corrupted by the, the Halo Beast. MacB, what's up? I will right, we'll see. Anyway. Alright, let's see next. Miss Yunli caused a ruckus at the Arsenal Commission, trying to take away Guyun, but you stopped her in her tracks. What Dao said seems right. Exactly, so at least Yunli didn't steal Soya at that time because we were at the Oromaton warehouse. If your testimony is reliable, I'm not implying anything, but we need to scrutinize every piece of evidence. Okay. After bidding farewell to you, Yunli pretended to leave by snuck into the arsenal alone and stole Guyun. After Yunli and I went our separate ways, I visited Master Gongshu to inform me about the incident. And much later, Master Gongshu told me the soul was confirmed it's safe. So up until that point, Yunli couldn't have stolen it. Can I prove this? Let's go with this. Wait, you missed that Master Gongshu? I had no idea. Well, that's some solid proof right there. Indubitably. Wait. Uh, okay. However, it only proves the sword wasn't stolen up to that point. Indeed. I didn't do it! After bidding farewell, you plan to leave the second to rest on the stole Guyun. We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. Looks like you're missing some crucial evidence. There are no signs that they are also being broken into, so the only real evidence is the sword case. No, the fact that there are no signs of breaking is suspicious itself. Which piece of evidence should I use to convince Daho? Um, I think it would be the intact lock. I carefully examined the lock of the sword case and there was no sign of tampering or damage. What does that mean? It means that case was never locked in the first place. As to why the case was never locked in the first place, only the people who delivered it to the Artisanship Commission would know. Plus, I found something else inside the case. Which piece should I use to further convince um, the rose panel? 
I found this in the crevice at the bottom of the case. A rose petal. I must have missed it during the search, but why was there a petal inside the case? I don't know, but I do not know where the Knight of Beauty goes. He'll always leave behind a trail of rose petals. It's almost impossible to clean up. Alright, the bait's successful. My thoughts are a mess. Let me sort them out. Alright. The sword case was never locked, which is evidence that only someone who delivered the sword could have done that. And the rose petal was probably left behind by the Knight of Beauty. But how did he manage to take the sword from the Arsenship Commission? Why did he steal it after returning it here? And why would he leave the petal in the case? How am I supposed to know? I know. Green flew out of the case on its own, the Knight of Beauty only unlocked the box to aid its escape. Don't be ridiculous. I could have sword escape from a case on its own. You've never even seen a flying sword before. Uh, I've only heard about the Mika Kibisa being able to fly in legend, but even if you could fly, why would the Knight of Beauty do this? Like I said, the sword contains a helibus. I don't see must have been under the control of the sword. Maybe it wasn't its, under its control even before you arrived at the Louisville. Official Dahao? Why can we find that knight? Let me see, the docking location of Argenji's ship, the one and only. Let's go, kitty. We've got to find Argenji before the sword completely takes over his mind. Alright, let's go. Alright, let's see. Let's hurry up, baby! Firefly is so cute. I love the little lantern. A renty! In the corner of Starsky's cave, you stumble upon a knight clad in shimmering silver armor. Hello! 15th day of Mont X, 1604. I've been waiting for you here for quite a while. Knight of Beauty, you're the only one. You're the one who stole Guyon, right? Hand it over. You have no idea how dangerous the curse sword is. Dangerous? In my humble opinion, the real danger is always the hand wielding the weapon. So you intentionally left the rose spell behind? Yes, I did. As in last night, I was sworn to live in poverty, and I abhor theft. I had to leave behind a rose petal in order to keep my promise to Master Guyu, and I pulled my knightly oath. What do you mean? I agreed to assist Master Guyu in his escape from the Chanjo. As a person who pulled it from the stone monument, captivated by its beauty, I must not let it down. I couldn't stay in the arsenal to convince the craftsmen, nor did I want to take the sword like a thief. That's why I left behind a small piece of evidence that pointed to my identity in the hope of an open and honest conversation with you. I feel like he only stole it because he doesn't want uh, Yumi to, to melt it because it probably would be a shame to its beauty. Whatever your reasons are, you're planning to take the cursed sword away from the Shanju. Hand over to me. Back then, it was the beauty of Master Green that impressed me. So I willingly embarked on the journey to return the sword. But unfortunately, Master Guyun's homeland is no longer the ideal place for it to return to. As a knight of beauty, I must not abandon it halfway. Oh no, he's completely captivated by the cursed sword. I could snap you out of it. The solution is right in your hands. The bat? Captivated? No. I am touched by Master Guyan's flawless beauty. To be honest, I'm confused why none of you can understand the sword. This is quite heartrending. I've already made up my mind to take Master Guyan away from the Shanjo. The cursed sword has messed up with your ability to think. I'll break you free from its creep. I'll shatter its illusion and the sword itself. Fair lady, if you're intent on taking away this person, this sword that is under my protection, please engage me with a fair jewel according to knightly etiquette. As a representative in this jewel, I, Urgency, challenge you. Damn, a penalty. I swear on the spirit of chivalry in front of Idrila de Beauty that I will represent Master Guyun in this duel. If I win, you will allow Master Guyun to leave the Janjo with me. And if you best me, Miss Yunli, I accept my defeat and turn Master Guyun over to you. Do you accept my challenge, Miss Yunli? Fine, let's see who's desire stronger. Desire to take it away or my desire to hunt down all curse swords? Show me what you've got. Damn! Show me what you've got. 
In a country where I have no single tool but sword play, in a proper duel like this, a knight should rely on this skill he saw day and night. True! You're a real weirdo. Real weirdo. Don't even come through! Man, the music is cool. I just wish he had a skin. I don't like his armor. Get them! That's a lot of shields. Alright, let's hit him. Le bonk. Alright. Mm, basic. Sir. And insane. Got him. I've lost. According to the rules of the Knight's Duel, I should keep my promise and end over the sword to you. But before I do that, I hope that you, as the winner, might have mercy and listen to Masukun's past experiences. This sword has been cursed since the day it was forged. Place it in front of me and let me destroy it. Do what she says, Knight. But you've done so much for me already. It's time for me to face her alone. A gentle draws forth an ancient sword, scattered from countless battles, before all eyes the blade rises slowly. I am wary of fighting, I just want to share my past with you, to explain why I wanted to escape. After that, I'll leave my destiny to your hands, in your hands. Are you afraid to witness my past, little girl? Afraid? Well, you do have a different aura from the other sword, the core sword. You're just trying to use my curiosity to lure me in. Well, you know best that a single touch will snatch away anyone's sanity. I think it's worth a shot, Jinli. Fine, show me your past. Ooh. Oh shit. It's already impossible to contact the main Cloud Knight's forces. What awaits me will be a long and lonely war. Follow me. Is this your memory? You were in Bellabog? That's crazy. It's so cold here. I didn't feel it when I was in the thick of battle, but now it's freezing me to the bone. You're indeed the masterpiece from the Shanju Zhuming. If you hadn't taken control of my body, I probably would have been decapitated in that fight. Quiet and stay alert. Borisian wolf troopers never give up their hunt. Wolf troopers. Let's relax a bit, it's been over 300 days since we were both trained on this planet. The transmitter never rings, so I guess we can't count on that anymore. The people on this planet still use beasts to pull their carts. Obviously, there's no way they can help us fix the Skarskiv. Looks like we're straight on this Forsaken plan for the rest of our lives. The rest of the Jantra's native's life could be terribly long. Are you feeling any desperation, all by yourself in the hostile world? Yeah, a bit, perhaps. When things get too rough for you to handle, just leave everything to me. No need to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, sure. If I really can't handle things anymore, I'll leave my body to you. But now is not that time. You really think you can oppose an entire Borisian army with your limited skills? What are you holding out for? It's true that I'm stranded here, but it seems like this Borisian pack is in the same boat. By the way, Grion, you know what a seed is. A seed may seem insignificant, but with careful cultivation and time, it can grow into a huge, unwavering tree. You said that the rest of the Chandra native's life could be terribly long. You're right. 
That's why I intend to plant a seed named Resistance here and nurture it for the rest of my life. I want to show the people of this land how to defend themselves against those monsters. Hey Jay, what's up? I can already see the seeds in the eyes of those people. <laughs> you really think you can do it? Why not just give me control and we can revel, revel in the bloodbath together? What was the memory I just saw? It was a memory of me in a cloud land, stranded on an unfamiliar planet. The crash landed on a planet occupied by Borisim, just the two of us. I can feel I was a lonely war. Hey T, hey Alex, how are you doing today? Hiya! Bouncy? Bouncy? I'm doing pretty good, thanks, how are you? I'm okay, a bit of a headache, not gonna lie. I didn't rest well enough. Unfortunately. A bit down before, but I took a drive and I'm better now. Nice. Yeah, I've heard that taking a drive can help you get things off your mind. I'm alive, but all the young people in the village. They died. They died for you. They died because of your big promises. Promising them a life free from the Borisin. I tested their despair before their death. They didn't see it coming, and neither will you. We can't stay here. Let's move on to the next village. Why? What's the point? You and your sorry skills for an army have been fighting for over three decades. You haven't won a single battle. What you're sowing is not resistant to the despair. Dang! This world is hopeless. It's completely infested with packs of Borisin. That's not very cool! That's not very cool at all. You've seen their numbers and you know their message. And those commoners you've put your hopes in, they just kneel down and worship the monsters devouring their children and families, calling them their Beastmaster. You beheaded one of the Beastmasters for their sake, but they turned on you because they were scared of the boys and taking revenge. You remember all that, right? I do. I remember my first death. The Borisin cut off my head. But I also remember that if it weren't for a brave youngster who risked his neck to reattach my head and give me a proper burial, I would have disappeared completely. I remember everything the people did for me. They left food at the entrance of my cave, fixed my fur coat, and some even joined my resistance. Dang. The rest of the Chantra's native life is still terribly long, and there will be new youngsters who will stand beside me in battle. Time is on our side. You said it was a lonely war. No, it wasn't a war filled with loneliness, but with despair. So much despair that I don't even want to taste it again. I'm leaving. Where are you going, your highness? Oh no. I'm returning to my homeland. A distant place beyond the sky. I'm not coming back. Dang. But what should we do with you gone? What if those wolf demons show up again? They won't, my child. You've wiped out the last of them. But before I go, I need you to do one thing for me. Even though the wolf demons are gone, your monsters will appear in this world. Soon a demon will appear, donning golden branches and knowing only bloodshed. However, fear not, my children. I'm entrusting you with the sword that's been with the me in countless bat battles. Use the skill I've taught you over the years, and you'll surely defeat the last demon. It's not all. I need to construct a stone monument for me. It must be large and sturdy enough to steal the remains of the demon forever. This is a debt you owe me, and you must fulfill it. Do you understand? So the rock was his tomb all along. You lied to them, and you lied to me too. Hmm? You promised that you'd give your body to me when you couldn't handle things anymore. <laughs> well, this Yanshu's native life has finally come to an end, my old friend. How about one last chance for revenge? 
come and bid me farewell for the final time. He had long since come to, under to some understanding. I could sense a mix of intricate emotions flowing out. It wasn't bloodlust or anger or fear. What he left for you was hope. They've learned how to fight monsters, but it's still one left monster lingering the world. Kill it, my old friend. He left me there without even looking back. Damn. Thank you, my old friend. Held you back in tasting my emotions. How do my emotion taste, my old friend? A hint of bitter compassion and a touch of scalding courage. Your heart's deepest desire is the end of war once and for all. Now the war is finally over. Can you hear? Even though you can't hear me anymore, my old friend, I do everything I can to bring an end to all conflicts in the world. So this is the path of the Kalevalan people, sort of heroes. You helped the people of that world bring an end to the war. No, I did not. I am a weapon, and I only became the cause of more conflict. Countless monarchs of Kalevala saw me as a symbol of kingship and by nature. They waged wars in order to possess me. I grew tired of their wicked intentions. I didn't want to kill for anyone anymore. So I returned to the stone monument where my master was buried. And since then, no one was able to remove me from it. But you allowed Argenti to take you away. Because even after all this time, I still wanted my master to come back home. Damn. During the sword gifting ceremony, I felt anguish when I learned that I would be handed over to the most skilled sword master and once again become a tool for killing. My master had engraved his deepest, uh, his deepest desire into my blade, and war. As a weapon, my purpose was to be determined from the start. I had to become a deadly sword that would relentlessly hack and kill. But once I fulfilled my mission, I have the right to choose my own destiny like he did. So I asked the Knight of Beauty to help me break free from this never-ending cycle of bloodshed. These thousands of years have naturally turned into memories of mine. I think I understand the beauty the knight was talking about now. Hardcore, truth. I don't want to be a sword that brings death. My war ended long ago. The years spent as a tombstone were my finest. Damn. Damn! I've told you everything about my experience with Master Guyun and Kalevala. And now I'm sure that Miss Yunli is as moved by the sword's flawless beauty as I was back then. Even though I had heard the legend of this sword from the delegation, delving into his memories was still fascinating. Yunli, I trust Guyun's experiences have changed your mind. General Huayan said this sword would change you. That's why Grandpa hated for me, so I wouldn't make a hasty decision. I always thought the cursed sword infused with the Halibus would only bring rage and slaughter. I never thought someone could leave behind the desire to end war and even change the nature of the cursed sword. My position was too extreme. Green is truly a sword of heroes. I... I apologize to all of you for my behavior. Ah, oh, look at that, she grew. I'm sorry. The sword is like, aha, I will now kill you. Yata! Now that you've proven Miss Yunli's innocence and found a sword, we will now return it to the arsenal. No, I'm still going to melt down this sword. Oh, Yunli. I 
I've heard your true desire, Tukun. I can sense that you're tired of being a sword, constantly serving your masters and fighting battles you no longer want to be a part of, right? But being a sword is my destiny. I'm doomed to serve some master and fight battle endlessly. Can the wind stop... a truce to stop blowing? Can a cloud truce to stop drifting? No, it's the same for me. A creation with a predetermined destiny. That's not true, Gion. That nameless sword master shaped his own destiny, so you can too. I just can't picture my destiny being anything other than that of a sword. Do you remember when you stood alone in front of the sword master's stone monument? People admired you because you carried the memories of the hero. You were no longer a sword, you were a memorial. Later, as I became worn and weathered, the gentle wind would pass through the hollows of my body, creating melodic tones that echoed in the distant mountains. I became a musical instrument then. I miss those times. Can the creation become what it wants to be? The answer is yes. I'll grant your wish, Guyan. And transform you into something different. Something different? An instrument? Make, it a, make him a flute? But they should have prize for the war dance, if the Caliban delegation finds out. Please, say something, General Kwaya. Well, my granddaughter has always been stubborn. Are you really sure about this, Yunli? What do you think? Uh, that's what you want, I'm on board. Fulfilling Master Guyun's wishes is the reason I came to the Jandro. With Idrilla's blessing, Gu turned Master Guyun's into a cloud. But as long as it fulfills his wish to end war, I support it fully. Then I will leave it to you, Yunli. Finally, you make your way to the Artisanship Commission spent at Armory, seeking to use all the forge forging furnace. Ah, oh, it's been an honor getting to know you like this. The honor is mine. Thank you, Yunli. Why the long face, my child? Are you feeling regrets already? Perhaps, or... You are completely determined when melting down the sword, so why the sudden change of heart? Grandpa, I melted down the price for the red dance. How are you going to explain this to the Lufu? Oh, am I hearing right? The little girl is worried about the grandpa. I didn't see that coming. Mm. If only I had talked to you from the beginning, grandpa, maybe things would have, wouldn't have escalated like this. At least Guyun got what he wanted. I have no regrets there. When it comes to sword, you you and your father are cut from the same cloth. So are you planning to continue melting down the rest of Huang Wang's sword? Yeah, Guyun is unique, but the other cursed sword is still too dangerous for anyone to handle. Maybe I'll try to be more patient next time. Be more patient? Well said. Remember what you learned today, because there will be many more situations in the future that will require you to be more patient. Understood, but what about the price? Well, ever since you showed up at the ceremony, I had a hunch. So I prepared another sword as a backup plan. And don't worry, this one has nothing to do with Helibai. Helibi. That's perfect! By the way, the ambassador from Kalevala and the knight went to Orum Alley. They're looking for a spot to honor the hero. Why don't we go take a look together? Let's go. Hell yeah, baby! That's nice. I wonder what they turned it into. I hope like it's a it's a wind instrument that can just sing with the well with the breeze. <gasps> it ah, let's go. Jin what brings you here? My granddaughter was inspired by the hero legend told by the Mieka Kibisa. So she dragged me here to take a look. Nah, it's not a wind chime. It seems to be a uh oh, I don't remember the name of it. But it's nice. What's this golden sapling? I come from a long line of Kalevalan monument keepers. For generations, my family has guarded the stone monument left behind by the nameless hero. Over the centuries, the golden tree sprouted from under the monument. Its branches have never withered. We Kalevalan see it as proof of the hero's existence. Before leaving Kalevala, I took a branch from that golden tree, hoping to plant it here to present the hero returning to his homeland. That sounds good. Which I'm sure people don't make coffee in the set of memorial, so I'm sure you would be happy to rest here with life is bustling. We heard that ask our ancestors to carve something to the monument, so I made a copy of it too. When the inscription is pretty worn with age, perhaps you can still make out some of it. I've drifted far from my homeland and I'm on the brink of death, yet I take solace in having honorably fulfilled my duties. Should you feel compassion for me, kind traveler, please take a handful of soul, hands, and bring it back to the Luofu. 
Mr. Pavlov, I wonder if that hero ever left a name in your history. I apologize, but the hero's epic battle happened long ago, and he did not leave any name for us to call him. But our mythology came from the heavens, and so we call him the Cloud Knights. Oh! Welcome home, Cloud Knights. Now you can also rest here, Guyan. Ah, oh, that was very nice. Hey, Yunli. I'm feeling a bit emotional. I'd like to stay here for a while. Thank you for your guidance, Kitty. I'm truly grateful. By any chance, would you be interested in taking soul lessons with me? Like March? Uh, maybe not. I have my baseball bat. <laughs> and an assuming ancient uh, Gushin, its body and strings appear to be crafted for a unique kind of metal. Even what a human's touch, it occasionally bursts out notes, as if humming an untuned melody for someone unseen. Now that my mission is accomplished, the delegation will be leaving the Shanjalua for soon, but of course the experiences here will become an epilogue to the hero's stories. This golden sapling will become a part of the everyday scenery of the Shanjo. I believe it's what he would have wanted. As a punishment for being an accomplice in the theft, General Huaya assigned me to guard this golden sapling and recite the story of the hero and his legendary sword to passerby. This is not a punishment at all, and I gladly accept it. Uh, spreading the, this message of beauty to the Changzhou residents is exactly what I desire. However, I plan to leave the Changzhou soon and continue my travel. May I pass across again the vast cosmos, my dear friend? That was very nice. I really like this. I think for story mission, I mean, there's some ups and downs. I thought that, like, uh, what's it called? Well, Sparkle, like, companion mission was a bit kind of random, and you had to hang out with Sampo, which I didn't really care for. I think this one was very good. Because you just got to learn a lot about Yunli, her past, the story. You got to see her, like, developing and, like, learning from, from the experience. It was really nice. The story just focused on her, and I think that was fantastic. Um, so I'm looking forward to more stories like that. I think Yunli is very adorable. It was really nice to see, like, because she's very headstrong, right? She's very headstrong. She tends to jump into the thick of things very fast. We saw a lot of that from the main story with, like, her relationship with, uh, Yang Xing, right? And so it was nice to see, like, her more vulnerable side and her frustration, etc. So I really appreciated it. I don't know what you guys think about it. Um, but yeah, I think that was great and I'm happy I did it. I kind of took my time with this one because I had, like, so many other games to do, as always. I'm playing, like, 15 gacha games. Um, but I'm glad I put time aside to just do it and focus on that. So, yeah. Big, big... Yay! Yata! Insane. All right. Good, good time. It was lovely. 